Hello my lovelies, welcome to my little cottage by the sea, the place where I like to stitch and craft my way to a vintage inspired and sustainable lifestyle. Very recently I shared my travels to Paris and I showed you this magazine Mode Pratique and a few of you said that you would like to see inside and have a little bit of a look through. Seeing as your wish is my command, I thought that we would have a detailed little look at the treasure that lies within these covers. I picked up this really fabulous magazine from the flea market in Paris, the very famous big one, Marshal Puce, uh, Klingancor. I apologise in advance to my French speaking lovelies for any butchery that may happen with your beautiful language. Uh, this is Mode Pratique and the front cover is an evening ensemble by Schiaparelli. I was in Paris to see the Schiaparelli exhibition. She's my favorite designer and literally the first stall that I came to, which was sort of a, an ephemera stall, lots of postcard stamps, all that kind of thing, magazines. And I picked this up and I, I almost fell over because I had just seen the very same ensemble in um, the exhibition at the Musée des Arts Décoratifs and it's um, a really incredible one. So this is an, a, uh, an illustration of the very same outfit here that you can see, uh, same dress which came in pink. And there were varieties, variations of this cape made in different colours. So the black, she did a um, very famous shocking pink one. My cardigan is uh, shocking pink in um, honour. I think it may be my favourite colour other than black. But anyway, and um, it's sort of a bit forgotten how influential she was in terms of fashion of the time and innovative. So this... Uh, evening cape that is worn on the front of this was made from taffeta and to get this sort of scrunkly effect she sort of did the thing that you really shouldn't do to taffeta she would have um, scrunched it all up and then steamed all the scrunchy sort of creases into it which is what you do actually with um, silk when you want to make pleats you send your um, fabric off to a pleating company and they put it, pleat it between layers of card and then put it in steamers. So basically this fabric would have become a great big ball and then um, put into some kind of steam which would have um, put these incredible um, sort of creases in making it look like a completely different fabric. So as we go in the first page is this really beautiful one with this evening dress and it's essentially the same silhouette, the same dress, same style lines and then there are these variations, these things that you can do to change it which is what happened a lot in um, 1930s, well clothes before because you wouldn't have gone and just bought loads of dresses. So there are these different collar variations. So we have a, a Bertha drape one here with a sort of little decorative detail just at this sort of centre front on the decolletage. And this is made of different go days. And this has actually got a gathered panel. So um, it would have been um, cut with more fabric on it. I presume um, this here and uh, this looks like it's been smocked around uh, this point. I feel it's always a bit dangerous to do decorative shenanigans around there. Um, can look rather um, strange but one of the things that I absolutely love about 30s fashion is that you did get all these little decorative details. So for instance this skirt of this one had the smocking detail across all of these um, sort of pyramid shapes going up into this shaped yoke, which is here. And it just shows you all the different variations that you can do with this. And a little discovery that I have just found, which I feel is quite genius, is that if you go onto Google, you can use Google Lens and you can translate um, 
or the like what's being said here so I could translate everything which I think I might do I might photocopy the pages that I'm particularly interested in and go through and um, translate what they're saying especially when it's about um, like the the actual sort of things that I'm particularly interested in I mean I'm interested in everything and I would like to make everything but I do like this the fact that this has got the actual pattern pieces here so from my blocks my bespoke blocks which I do over on Patreon I am able to cut this for myself should I wish I'm not sure which version I would do one two three or four maybe just all of them I mean obviously I have a lot of evening engagements so I would need all of these and then we turn over and we've got sort of day coats going into sort of coats that you could wear over evening gowns and I particularly love that you've got these sort of lovely illustrations and then you get these sort of line drawing illustrations and then the sort of the back views and there's just all these hopefully you can see got some lovely roses in this beautiful lilac that sort of matches my nails enjoying that anyway getting distracted how incredible are all these details so that's one of the real things of the 30s is you you get this sort of detail at the at the cuff at the sleeve bottom of the sleeve and as you go into the 40s you get more detail at the shoulder and less volume because obviously rationing has come in everything's sort of lined with fur and astrakhan and things that are quite problematic these days in fact there's often lots of things in these magazines that are problematic but i'm here for these beautiful ladies um and you know it is what it is it's of its time but look at all of this so we've got all these incredible darts creating the shape here and a beautiful voluminous sleeve or sleeve of fabulosity I'll pop links to any sort of projects that I've done here on YouTube that um, you might find of interest if you haven't already seen them and this one a really lovely like a lantern sleeve here um, trimmed with fur but this is lovely this sort of style line going down here and this draping on the front really very glamorous evening coat and I'm assuming they're sort of made maybe from velvets or things from the way they've been illustrated. This one's got a sort of drape round scarf type of there, trimmed with fur, cuff trimmed with fur, because why not? It looks like it's actually part of the coat rather than a, like a separate thing. Look at this, all of these pleats, accordion pleats that would have created this incredible um, sleeve shoulder detail going on here really clever pattern cutting going on which is why i find it so interesting i suppose and these more sort of day ones but look the this sort of panelled sleeve with this ruched detail going into a more fitted cuffer sort of the dolman type sleeve going on there one of my favorite things to do how lovely at this time to to sort of have lots of social engagements during the day that you needed to dress appropriately for. I, um, I particularly love that about vintage fashion, that you would have your outfit for the morning, your outfit for being in the house, your outfit for the afternoon, which is this, a sort of afternoon dress, evening, dinner, you know, tennis outfit, uh, no kind of necessarily slobbing their slobbing was much more glamorous than our slobbing I think but basically you would have fewer things and you'd have a dress and there would be different things that you could do to um, make this dress look a little bit different so that it looked like you had a lot more than you did so here we've got a sort of a, a Le Jabot type collar that you would clip onto this dress giving it a different look here we've got our curtain tie backs and just tied them around ourselves very very um thrifty thing to do i love a tassel as you may know and uh yeah i have a tie back for a curtain it's a bit large but you know maybe i can make that work here we've got a little sort of what looks like a pleated scarf i'm sure it explains all of this here but i i won't um go into it and for some reason even though there's not all that much difference they've done these tiny little illustrations of the backs of all of these um lots of things that you just sort of add on 
and clip on a collar here this like little sort of clown collar hero collar and then over here we have this lovely evening evening gown the silhouette was very sort of column columnar columnar um can't say the word but there you go and also very clever so here we have a sort of a, 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 a pleated evening skirt so this would be like a sunray pleat um that would have been done on maybe some kind of organza so you get this kind of multi-layered effect very clever little belt and some uh faux flowers at the shoulder very lovely design i'm loving that and then here a sort of a pleated uh bolero type shrug put on with a a um like a cummerbund type belt some kind of short thing going on here i mean essentially you could just get like a meter of fabric and wrap it around yourself and pin it and that would be lovely i'm really loving this one down here look this lady she's holding her cigarette would have been a cocktail cigarette maybe a gitan or a sobrani um with this sort of again organza it's got this crazy sort of um embellishment over it lovely little pointed cuffs really rather love that and uh, an assortment of capes things to adorn myself and I do really love these little evening jackets that you would get at the time they sort of carried on into the 40s a lot of things from the 30s would have been reworked uh, because that was the you know the usual thing even amongst the wealthy ladies who would be buying things like Schiaparelli or having a dressmaker make copies of they would have taken them back to their seamstress and got them reworked. Very clever. Have a story here. Not sure what that what that's about. So here are some um, little details, amusing details. Uh, it may not mean that, but I am assuming it is hair ideas, things that you can do. This dress here by Maggie Roof, uh, another famous designer of the time, and this Germaine Bailey. I've not heard of that name before uh this dress is called the venice um so i'm gonna have to go away and research lots of lovely little breadcrumbs things to take you on an adventure in terms of learning about the fashion of the time and then we've got this little coiffure hairstyle uh tied up with a ribbon very pretty and i'm loving this square sort of a hat looks sort of like a square beret I feel like that needs to happen and I'm not sure if that's Molyneux and this is Sard, CL Sard or the other way around it's not really um that clear to me what well, all the you know the names but um obviously heard of Molyneux but yeah love that idea mm, that's on the list and then we've got some um more less lot of focus on the evening here maybe because it's november or you know magazines are aspirational after all um why not dream of wearing this would have been real for real leopard real astrakhan but this sort of muff bag type affair so your sort of gloves and your gloves and your muff uh matching I make sure I always go out with my gloves and my muff matching. And here are some lovely um, evening coats to wear over beautiful dresses again. Little nipped in waist, little evening jacket with these lovely big sleeves. Lots of sleeve details going on. Beautiful fabrics. Obviously everything trimmed with fur. Um, and then over the page, we've got some lovely dresses, some sort of details going on here. How lush, a little focus here on some beautiful fabric that you um, you can buy. And I assume they've sort of illustrated these in that fabric. One of the things that I've been saying about these 30s dresses is there are just lots and lots of details. The um, pattern cutting, the styling ideas the design features are are quite complex quite fussy really and they tend to sort of simplify in the 40s and you you get more sort of a plainer shape 
using less fabric for obviously obvious reasons and then all the sort of scrap fabrics were used to create sort of little embellishment details whereas 30s dresses are sort of got just lots of details so every dress sort of has style ideas embellishment on it uh, fabrication on it by fabrication I mean creating a type of fabric using the fabric and then an embellishment would be like an applied design of some kind like here this one has got a bit of lace these sort of puff sleeves yokes lots of yoke details lots of pleated details and gathered and and draped details again astrakhan little hat with a, a cockade cockade on it um by violette marzan very lovely i love these little tilt hats i'm not a massive hat person but i kind of in my dream life i am so here's um some more evening dresses beautiful again little evening jacket something that schiaparelli actually started the trend for so these sort of columnar cannot say the word evening shapes long kind of svelte tubular very narrowing very slim fitting shapes and then these sort of more extravagant shoulder details and sleeve details uh, here we've got some kind of flower embellishment there a striped um, skirt with a center front seam very lovely it's probably bias cut and then it's got these sort of cutaway V details that's really rather lovely um, a, like a brow I don't know what this thing is sort of like a tie going round sort of mid thigh interesting this one's quite beautiful isn't it like the the yoke details these cut details very poofy sleeves with what may be some um, smocking and then open at the front would have used some kind of fabric like an organza maybe a printed organza and then pleated and then cascading falling here very lovely little evening bags I do so love an evening bag I don't really have very many but I'm gonna start looking for them I think over the page some embroidery some um, projects things that people can do little patterns and shapes for these um, these little pillows cushions nighty bags whatever these are every good woman knows how to be a good wife at home prettifying her maison then uh, also every good woman knows how to do a little bit of knitting for her little kitty rather love this I'm sure you um, can understand why this little pudding here is holding a sort of cat shaped toy and then this little knitted jumper has got a black cat and a kitten on it I am there for that not really for the pudding bit but the um but definitely for that little motif and then some sort of lingerie and patterns things maybe that you can order i haven't translated this so not entirely sure but i am loving this uh petticoat here i am about to uh embark on project lingerie this video on its way all about it and that's going to be my main focus of the year is, is sort of using up fabrics doing this sort of patchwork project and um, some lingerie and a little bit of tailoring and then a bit that I really like not necessarily a couple of puzzles nothing too complex not too much because us little women have got you know embroidery and knitting to do I say that as a sort of tongue-in-cheek thing but actually that is what I spend all my time doing um, so there you go uh, love all the um, adverts I kind of don't want to translate them because I like the sort of uh, my lack of understanding so this sort of accidental made up understanding of what these adverts are but look here we've got a nice sewing machine going on here uh, in its own table that looks rather rather lush 
Oh, there's another cat here. I'm not sure what this is for. Uh, or Chat des Alpes. But um, I'm sure somebody will be able to fill us in on what this is. Love all the fonts that are used and, you know, just the, like the little illustrations and things. Obviously, photography was not a massive thing at this time. Uh, we've got an advert for fur. And then um, whatever this is. Whatever this is. Oh, DMC, so fabrics and things like that. Didn't know they were around at the time. So lots of adverts for um, products for the little woman in her maison, making her maison pretty. Uh, again, tongue in cheek, but that's how I like to spend my time. Obviously, fighting the patriarchy at the same time. Uh, here we have uh, announcements, so this will be things like people getting married and um, uh, babies, puddings being born, things happening, important things for every woman to know. So here we have fabrics, la soie, silk, so things to do with fabrics, tissue, uh, some stuff for Nestle, look. Nestle at that time, so milk powder, things for le baby. Uh, whatever's going on here, she looks rather troubled. Maybe prettifying her house and being a good woman has just got too much. Uh, layette lingerie, so things that are needed, um, I suppose, for uh, a time of your life when you're about to have a pudding. Uh, there may be more to it than that. And even I know what that is. Plus de constipation. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's her problem too. And then on the back, last but not least, we have these lovely, beautiful illustration of these two ladies having tea. Practically my favourite thing to do. Look at that amazing Art Deco tea set on this Art Deco table. Love her outfit. This lovely little blouse with these slacks. Very modern. Très moderne. She is um, sort of a little bit more uh, negligee attired, uh, but very lovely. Look, there's some kind of detailing around there. This butterfly sleeve, little beautiful satin, little pumps being worn there. Kind of want to do all of that. Thank you. And then here we have a uh, Angora something or other that she's got an Angora, what looks like an Angora sweater on, so maybe it's something to do with that. Uh, and you can go to Rue Saint-Denis in Paris and uh, get yourself some of that. Obviously we need a time machine. Uh, I would love a time machine so I could go back to various places like this and see, see all of these things, maybe pick a few up and bring them back and store them away and uh yeah but i hope you've enjoyed this little look at mode pratique and uh, how i wish i had lots more of these to to enjoy be inspired by and if there's anything particularly in here you would like to see made or a version of them do let me know because uh your wish is my command Thank you so much for spending time with me in my little cottage by the sea. I hope that you have got as many ideas from this beautiful vintage treasure, just like I have, whether it's for your handmade vintage inspired wardrobe or just some styling ideas. These vintage magazines really are a gold mine. I hope that wherever you are in the world, my lovelies, you're keeping very safe and very well. And I shall see you soon for some more sewing adventures. Bye.